All right, so what we're gonna be looking at is an object that has been shot at an angle and it is undergoing projectile motion, so something like this, and returning back to the ground about the same height that it came from. And we're gonna be looking at various graphs associated with this, all right? So you can do these in any order. I suggest that you try it first. Once you've tried it, then you can go ahead and watch my explanation for each of these. So if you need to, pause it, and we'll go on after. Okay, now from here, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start with E, the acceleration versus time first. All right, because that one's the easiest. Uh, the acceleration versus time, we know that the only force acting on the ball as it travels is gravity. Gravity is always pulling directly down, which means the only acceleration can be directly down. And so that acceleration, because the force of gravity doesn't change, should always be exactly the same, the same length every single time. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on here. I do specifically know that it is at negative G, negative 9.8. And so that would be the graph. Here's my zero. This is time. This is acceleration, right? And so that is my time acceleration graph. It's just a constant line at negative G, just like that. Okay. The next easiest one, so we got E done. And the next easiest one would be the horizontal velocity versus time. So that's letter C. So we're going to put the XV. So that's the horizontal velocity and then we'll put time here on the x-axis. And that one's easy because we know that when it's shot up at an angle, it has both the horizontal and vertical velocities. Now, because there's no horizontal acceleration, the only acceleration we have is, sorry, the only, uh, horizontally there's no acceleration. So therefore, the velocity should remain constant. And so in C, I am gonna start with some horizontal velocity, but that horizontal velocity will remain constant because there is no acceleration. So that will be whatever, I'm gonna go ahead and write this as Vx, whatever my initial velocity is, my initial horizontal velocity. You could actually, you could probably write it as Ux if you want, because that would be equal to whatever your x horizontal velocity is. And uh, so therefore we have our graph for that one. Okay, let's look next at vertical velocity versus time. I think that one's probably the next easiest because we know the acceleration. The acceleration is a constant negative G. So if the acceleration is constant, acceler acceleration is the slope of the vertical velocity versus time graph. And so since that is all vertical, then the acceleration of our velocity versus time should looks something like this. It should start at some value, whatever that initial vertical velocity is. And again, I can label that kind of as a U, Y. This will be the Y velocity and time. It needs to be a straight line like this, okay? And I try to do my best, just keep it straight. Not too thick, not too sloppy, but some kind of straight line right there where it starts at this value and then ends at negative uy down here at the bottom. So those two are essentially the same value. Okay, remember it should be a straight line because g is constant, and then it should essentially start and end at the same vertical velocity because of what we talked about in class. You can, sh you can prove that using your SUVOT if you want. Okay. Uh, all right, let's, uh, oh, let's look at the vertical speed. While we're, while we're working on vertical velocity, let's talk about vertical speed. So the only difference between velocity and speed is that speed doesn't need direction, all right? So if I mark that same UI, that's where it's gonna start. The speed is gonna have exactly the same acceleration, so I'm gonna mark this as T1 because I'm gonna use that a couple of times, so T1 here. And so this graph will go straight line to there, but the speed, the direction doesn't matter. So therefore, as I start to speed up, as the ball starts to come down and have that negative velocity that we saw there, now we're just going to make that be a positive speed. 
so that it gets back to essentially the same place. Now these should have more or less the same kind of slant to it, the same slope, because the acceleration is still g. It's just here it's causing the speed to decrease, here it's causing the speed to increase. So basically your speed versus time graph is the absolute value of your velocity time graph, the vertical, right? Okay, uh, let's look at the distances now. So the horizontal distance, recognize the horizontal velocity was constant, which means that the horizontal distance needs to have a constant slope. Remember that the slope of distance versus time is velocity. So if that was constant, then I should end up with a constant horizontal here. And that should make sense because as long as the ball is flying, the object is flying, it will continue to increase its horizontal distance away. It's never going to turn around and start coming back. So your graph shouldn't ever curve and start coming back here. So that's T and X. And that's simply it. It's just a straight line going up. Now the vertical distance versus time is a little bit more challenging, but we can still deal with that. The first thing is we do know that it starts off with some velocity. That's the slope of our vertical position versus time graph. But as time goes on, we can see that the velocity is decreasing. The slope is getting closer and closer to zero. So at some point, it's actually this T1. At T1, the velocity is going to be zero. And so I'm going to start with this slope, but by the time I get to T1, I'm going to have a slope of zero. Okay, now a slope of zero, that's lovely. A slope of zero just means that it has zero velocity at that instant. But we also talked about in class that it's only zero for that instant, and then the velocity is now negative. And so it should then come right back down, hopefully more or less symmetrical. My art skills are not amazing, but you can see that I still come back down with approximately the same slope, just now it's negative because my velocity is now negative as it comes down. All right, so that hopefully that was helpful in talking through the graphs with you. Um, and I'll see you next time.